subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the bell icon for the latest film interviews, features and recommendations on the movies that matter. Ivan, congratulations on the new film. This is of course Milestone or Meel Pathar, which is the original uh, Hindi um, title. It's a deeply moving film, Ivan, and, and we'll talk about that. And I'm, I had the opportunity, of course, to watch it as part of the Pingyao International Film Festival. Um, Ivan, the film, of course, premiered at Venice last month. Um, it's at Pingyao and it will continue to travel. But does it feel strange not accompanying the picture, Ivan? Um, you know, not hand-holding the film on this journey. Um, because of, of course, travel and, and, and safety restrictions, the experience of sitting at the back of the hall and watching the audience sort of respond to the film, um, not being able to do that, does that feel a little bit, uh, sort of, disconcerting? Uh, well, more than that, actually. It, it, feels, uh, it feels absolutely terrible uh, because it's, you know, filmmaking, it's, uh, it's a very lonely process. Yeah. Uh, filmmaker is... Uh, is you know, you're secluded most of the time writing and then uh, uh, even while you're making the film, you're surrounded by your very, you know, your close confidants on the set. And uh, then, of course, comes uh, the post, which is where most of the film gets done, which is, again, a very lonely process. I had edited the film myself. That's how I got through this lockdown. And I was sure. hoping that by the time the, the edit was done and the film uh, got selected at uh, a festival, uh, we'd be, you know, we'd be past this phase, but unfortunately, it didn't happen. And uh, uh, yeah, so it's 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 uh, I'm missing being on the festival circuit. I'm missing, like you said, uh, being in that uh, hall, sitting in the back, and uh, watching the audiences react to you know moments. So. And uh, yeah, it, it does feel that uh, something got stolen away, that something has been taken away from, uh, from, from me. And um, uh, I think I, I, I won't be saying this just for myself, but for other filmmakers and actors and uh, other film crew as well. Yeah. I mean, you know, um, unlike the last film, Sony, which was also in fact your, your debut feature, Excellent film, by the way, and we'll talk about it. Um, Milestone is told from the man's point of view. This is the story of a trucker, a man whose wife has died recently, um, and how that becomes a trigger for him to look back at his past and also come to terms with a future that is that seems quite uncertain. Mm. It's about the uncertainty, the, the loneliness, um, the feeling of directionless that he must confront now in the wake of, of his wife's death. You set the story in the US originally, apparently, um, where, of course, you worked as a software developer for more than 10 years. Mm -hmm. But then you rewrote it to set it in the Delhi NCR region. Mm -hmm. um, what was the single idea, Ivan, that, that you were interested in exploring that stayed common in both versions of the script? Well, the idea of, uh, again, the idea of the individual's loneliness, I think that's, uh, and being away from home. I mean, had the film taken place in the U.S., it would have been uh, would have been two aspects of being away from home. One, being away from home where you live, and then being away from home in the, in the sense that you're away from your roots and you're away from you know where you actually come from. What because we, it was still going to be a story of Indian truckers in the U.S. Yes. In Indian, yes, an Indian truck driver in the U.S. But one, uh, it was it was set there only because I uh, used to live there and work there. But then once I moved back and uh, picked up the script again, uh, which was after uh, a gap of like almost a year, um, the the idea of then setting it there uh, didn't appeal to me as much, and uh, I wanted to explore the the spaces uh, here uh, because you know trucks. Are ubiquitous. I mean, you know, you see them everywhere, and uh, I think the I, I felt that a lot of the a lot of the uh, kind of personal uh, human themes in the film uh, could remain the same, and uh, there are only certain uh, kind of aspects of the daily life and you know just some minor details that had to be kind of ported over, shall we say? Right. Uh, so. Uh, 
So it wasn't it wasn't uh, it wasn't that much of a stretch, but of course the, the script had to be rewritten, uh, and I spent uh, like close to four or six months uh, rewriting that. Yeah. You know, it is what one might describe um, as a slow burning character study, a slow burn character study, and and I feel that that's that's also a, a term that that's possibly been used to describe Sony in the past. Um, in that film, of course, Gitika Olyan's character, um, who's a who's a junior police officer, divorced junior police officer, um, her inner and outer life we come to understand. And Saloni's character, her her supervising cop, becomes this the sort of entry point or catalyst for us to understand Sony and and, and why Sony is the way that she is and and her rage issues and um, and and in Milestone there is Galib, of course, who is the main character, the protagonist, and of course he's got this back that's giving him trouble. Um, there is a second character, there is Pash, who's, uh, who's an apprentice who's um, driving with him. And it is through their interactions and their, uh, their conversations that we, again, sort of decode uh, Ghalib a, a little bit better. One of the things that I thought was, was very beautiful in the film was just its introspective quality. I mean, just how introspective it is, a lot more in fact than even Sony. Um, can you talk about your write, writing process, Ivan? Um, about about writing characters that are so authentic uh, and 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 so rich in detail, detail which is actually very often not spelt out, but but left for us to again decode um, through incidents and through characters and through moments in the film. Uh, sure, the uh, the writing process uh, is you know uh, it, I mean I don't think there's anything special about it. Uh, it's just just I. Uh, what might be peculiar about uh, my writing is that I usually start with a character. The character uh, is the center of my universe. I try to um, I try to imagine a character uh, and try to fall in love with that character, so that you know um, I remain attached to that character, and then of course the 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 viewers or the audiences, uh, you know, they they uh, I can invite them into the story through right. that character. So the character is central, uh, and then, of course, the the questions like, okay, who is this person? You know, uh, personally and then professionally. I mean, what does this person do? Um, you know, those kind of questions start. Uh, of course, they, they start coming into my head. There are flashes. I mean, it's it's. Uh, I think any filmmaker would relate to this. That you know, you just start getting as you get into the story, you start getting flashes, start imagining this character, uh, and uh, so it's it's not in my case. It's not very linear. Sometimes, like for instance, the I don't want to uh, give away too much, but uh, we'll not talk about the last scene, but like right. uh, you, you remember the last scene. So yeah. uh, without giving it away, I can tell you that the, the last scene of the film was one of the first scenes that came to my mind. It was the, it was probably, uh, if I try to think back, probably the very first scene actually that came to my mind. Uh, so, you know, these flashes start appearing and then sometimes, I don't remember which uh, author said this, I think it's better if you know how the film ends yeah. or how the, how the story ends rather than how it begins. So, but that is, uh, that was actually true to a great extent with Sony as well. I just, I just knew that that is how the film uh, should end, not in that space, but like her reading a book. Right. That how that's how I wanted to kind of end the film. So that that so though so so it's not linear, right. and uh, but of course once uh, you know once a draft is complete, um, I try to I try to bring in a co-writer just to kind of you know polish things and uh, dialogues is something I I always need help with. So again, a uh, uh, big shout out to Neil Manikanth who uh, helped me with the dialogues here. He's the co-writer on the film. So, um, so I think the, again, to summarize my thoughts here, start with the character, not always linear, 
And then second and the th third draft is when you actually polish it. What's the, what's the research um, item that goes in? I mean, how do you get into the head of a, of a female officer who's facing sexism on the job on a daily basis or, or this Punjabi truck driver who's confronting all these existential um, you know, questions? What's the what's the research? Are you spending time with with people in that world? The research, the research is the world that they that the world the world where the story is set to make mm -hmm. that world authentic. Yeah. But I don't think there's much research. I I don't I don't see how I could research, or whether I need to research a human being. I mean I don't right. necessarily see Sony as. Uh, uh, I mean, this is something I remember I uh, said something, I, I was asked at the mommy screening of Sony. Uh, and uh, I mean, my answer is still the same. I mean, I tried to wrote, I tried to write of the film uh, uh, from the perspective of a human being. Right. So uh, the, uh, the, the, you know, what they, do at their job or what gender they might be. I mean, those things come later. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the end of the day, as a human being, they must feel enraged by, uh, you know, uh, being seen in a certain way. So our, you know, they have certain desires, they have certain fears, they have certain flaws. So those things I think are uh, common. Uh, and I think I can share with some of the characters I'm writing. So, uh, and I do share. <laughs> so, uh, so the, uh, those fundamental truths that are, uh, that I try to explore about an individual, mm -hmm. I think that's what I hope that the audiences connect with. Um, the research is, of course, about the world that they live in. I want to make sure that the, the, you know, when they, when they are uh, speaking, they speak, their, their, their speech is actually true to the world they live in, their, their dialogues are true to the world they live in. So those things are, of course, where we have to do a lot of research. You know, one of the things I think that, that, that's very strong about your films is the casting. Um, you avoid it, you, you, you consistently seem to avoid faces that are familiar, faces that will, that will you know, it, it becomes easier in the world building and, and certainly that way, um, you're thinking of them as the character and not as an actor that you've seen in a previous film. Um, Geetika and Saloni was spot on in, uh, in, in Sony, of course, and Suvinder Vicky, uh, he, in, as Ghalib in, in Neil Pathar is just incredible. I mean, this is, I, I know he was in uh, Chauthi Koot, but, but that was such a little watched film. Um, what is the process? Again, what's the casting process? Is that something you're specifically trying to avoid um, faces that are too familiar? Or, um, or are you just looking for the right face that matches your vision of the of, of, of the character? The latter, of course. I mean, there's no there's no such uh, you know idea of avoiding anyone. Uh, it's just uh, I think you know for for Sony, for instance. I mean, had this uh, character in mind who um, you know who was a little frail. Uh, which uh, which kind of put her at a sort of disadvantage, you know, physically. Right. Uh, so the, but that's that's basically it. I mean, I and uh, there the idea was somebody who had a very strong theater background that uh, Gitika, uh of course has, uh, and uh, and that was for a reason because the technique that we were going to follow, which was kind of predetermined was yeah. this long, you know, yeah. this uh, single long takes uh, within, you know, each space. Mm -hmm. So the idea of actually memorizing and uh, just staying with uh, the whole notion, the whole emotion of uh, the scene, uh, I think that felt to me at the time that would be best suited to somebody who came from a, or who had a very strong theater background. Mm -hmm. So, and of course there are many people, I think in um, many actors who have that, uh, but then it's again, the idea of going through auditions and uh, you know, what feels right. It's hard to explain. I mean, it's right. just Gitika's audition. I still remember it was a video audition and 
Um, it was barely a two minute introduction. And I somehow felt that uh, this is it. And uh, uh, so we, are, we did go through uh, other rounds of auditions, but uh, it, I mean, at the, the you just you just know you just uh, you you just know that this is and with Suvinder, I think this was a much harder uh, much harder role to cast because uh, uh, one it's a certain age group. Yeah. Uh, number two, uh, I wanted somebody who was uh, you know who actually was familiar with the you know not the world but familiar with uh, the culture. And uh, just to make everybody's lives more miserable and my own life more miserable, I threw in that must speak fluent Punjabi. So, and fluent Hindi. So, uh, so those things, of course, you know, they, they narrow the, the pool uh, so much that uh, in the end, there's, there's not that many, but not to say, not, not, to, not to be this, Sovinder was not the, not the perfect person to play. So I think it's, is exceeded like uh, he is my, incredible. Uh, that face is so expressive. It's really yeah. a canvas, yeah. um, and and he does have that sort of world weariness um, to him, which yeah. is yeah. Yeah, I mean, and uh, the 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 idea of uh, Swinder is actually he's he's prepared he prepared uh, a great deal for this part. Uh, you know, something which we uh, talked about. Uh, I think like a couple of months before the shoot began was that he was not going to uh, touch his beard. He's not that old. So he, he's, uh, I'm not going to give his age away, but he's certainly not as old as Ghalib looks in the film. Yeah. So he had to, he had to really uh, make sure that uh, the, the, that weariness and uh, that age actually reflected on his face. So uh, yeah, so I think it worked out well. You, you shot the film in January and February, I believe. Um, and, and soon after you finished shooting is when, is when actually India went into lockdown. How were you able to finish post-production and get it ready in time for, for Venice and for the festivals? Well, I mean, yes, we went into a kind of retreat just to kind of edit the film. But that was only because, uh, uh, you know, living in, uh, I mean, even though I don't live in Mumbai, I live in Chandigarh, but still kind of uh, went away from the city thinking that, okay, just two months, three months, it's all gonna be over. Uh, but it, it helped, it helped uh, me focus more on the edit. And, uh, but yes, it's still uh, the, the, the whole uh, Venice selection and the screening, it, uh, it happened uh, much sooner than we had anticipated. We were actually thinking what was going to happen next year because festivals didn't seem like a possibility this year. So, uh, so yeah, it was, the, it, there was a, uh, this last minute rush to get the film ready for the festival. But uh, yeah, we were able to get a, uh, uh, get a version, get okay. a version, a presentable version ready for the festival. And a lot of things had to be done, not a lot actually, all of it had to be done remote. Uh, remote uh, remotely uh, uh, you know working with uh, Gautam Mayer who's the sound designer again a shout out to him uh, uh, who was in Mumbai and uh, I was in Punjab just so communicating uh, over such calls. Yeah. But how does that work Ivan um, being a practicing filmmaker that lives in Chandigarh you know away from the sort of hub is that is that out of choice uh, and do you feel that that um, that is in fact conducive to your to your process well this is this is where i uh kind of for the time being i uh you know delhi and and uh of course delhi ncr i mean that's where i want to uh set my films i mean that's the area i'm more familiar with i spent a uh, part of my childhood there so i feel i understand uh this region better than i understand uh mumbai uh but i think uh yeah, I think being away, uh, just like being away from India for a while, kind of gives you a, a, a good perspective. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm not a good perspective, good or bad is actually not the term I meant to use. It, it's just a, sort of a, a, a different sort of perspective. And uh, perhaps I think being away 
from you know the the buzz you know where all the buzz is yeah. i think perhaps that gives me a, a certain kind of perspective i think so far it's uh, it's worked out okay uh but uh, we don't know about the future we'll see i mean you've said that the indian distribution system isn't particularly conducive to films like neel pathar and despite being selected in competition at prestigious festivals um there is a preconceived notion that notion that films like this will not make money or that they will not appeal to a wide audience sony of course went straight to netflix uh, it didn't have a theatrical release in india um but it's really a film that seems to have found its audience on on streaming because it's it's a film that 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 has been widely sort of regarded and um and and loved what needs to change ivan um so that independent films have a fair shot at the theatrical experience well i think the uh what has to change is uh perhaps the uh at the most fundamental level i think uh, uh the the kind of exposure that a common has to art and culture you know society and that has to change because uh i don't think we uh value art and culture as much as uh, some of the uh some of our western counterparts do uh where films from here actually go and uh, i mean i'd be i think i'm 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 hoping that a day would arrive when the world premiere of a film like meel patra world premiere of an independent film would be right here in india uh i mean that's that's basically the the most ideal uh situation for uh an indian filmmaker and why why should it not be i mean we are uh, for heaven's sake we're the biggest film industry in the world so it's it, the idea is quite uh, absurd that uh, films from here have to go and find a premiere outside to get attention here yeah. so uh so i think but that's because they uh are uh, friends in the west they've uh, mm-hmm. the society is as it's from the ground up i mean at the ground level arts and culture is something that is well supported and actually something uh that uh is invested into quite a bit mm-hmm. uh because let's not forget i mean it's uh, it's it generates so much employment as well uh so the i think that once once that changes and it's not true for cinema i mean it's true for any art form i mean uh it's true for uh, your your classical uh classical uh, art forms and painting performances theater mm-hmm. um so i think if if that is robust i think everything else uh can be easily then kind of built on top of it so that uh, at the fundamental level that will have to change for films like these to actually uh and the producers of these films to actually get the confidence to uh screen the film in theaters and then hope that yes people of course would come and uh, see the film um yeah oh i would love to watch i would love to watch so in their space in clo- you know those those close ups on a massive screen and just those passages those lonely passages it would be beautiful thank you ivan thank you this is such a wonderful film and and you are you have such an empathetic eye i think you really um i think your your sort of understanding of the human condition comes through so beautifully in both of these films um all the best for this one all the best for meel pathar i i can't wait to see what happens with it and i do hope that um i do hope it it somehow finds a wide uh, kind of release so that so that the most number of people see it it's a completely accessible film um if one sort of submits to it so so thank you thank you and um cannot wait to see what you do next well thank you thanks for thank having you. me it was a pleasure thank you thank you so much